This video is brought to you by Learn Flutter Code, the learning platform for Flutter developers. Now, when you implemented a feature that surprisingly has a lot of feedback, and the feedbacks are like, I want to edit my projects, uh, me want to edit projects, or is there a way to edit the projects? So your tech lead asks you to create an update method class. And in our previous videos, we had a simple object that is created for our project item, or you could see our project card over here. So now let's try and update this immutable class. So one way that you might have tried is to create a separate function outside of the class. Well, this method is called state update functions. We have a simple function called project item. It has two arguments, the project item or the old project item with the project item data type and a string ID. So this function helps us to update the ID. Therefore, it returns a new instance of a project item with a new ID and the rest of the properties will be extracted from the old project item that we passed in. So let's see this in an example. So our project item over here will probably live in our model file, maybe called project item dot dart. Then our update project item will live in a helper file. And lastly, we will use this inside our helper function or any other functions that we have so far and we will probably create or get a first project item and you want to probably update it. So for example, we have this project item with the ID ASDF. However, the user wants to change it into the HJKL. Therefore, the update project item ID function will return an updated project item object. So with this implementation, it is actually easier to understand and it gets the job done and it keeps the update functions away from the data or model class. So you have the separation of concerns. However, it is a lot of boilerplate code and you have to do a lot of rework if you were to refactor the function. And I only implemented the ID property and there is four more properties that needs to get updated. Yikes. However, this implementation can be good for some cases. So you think to yourself, there must be an easier way, right? And let me tell you, yes, there is. And it is called the state update class methods. This means we are creating the function inside the object itself or the class itself and it will look something like this. And you could see that there is this method called update ID and our arguments here is a string which is called a new ID. So the new ID will be passed in and it will create a new instance of the project item and we will just replace the new ID. And then other properties as well, we are just going to make use of the property that lives inside the project item object. It is the same if you were to put this dot image, this dot title, this dot description, and this dot technologies. Since uh, the, this can be a little bit redundant, we can just name it according to the description that we have created so far. Now, if we were to implement it in an example, we have this project item with the update ID method inside a model file like the project item dot dart. And then we will use it inside a helper file or a helper function or whatever file that needs it. So like we have earlier, we just have to get the project item that we need or the first one. You could say the ASDF. And then we will just use the project item update ID method and it will just put in the ID instead. So we don't need to have the old object. We will just need to use the current object and then it will override or update its ID and then we will just assign it to a new variable. So the advantage is that it is less verbose and more understandable. 
However, the disadvantage is that the logic of it to be updated is fixed, which means there is no flexibility as it is stuck in the class itself. So not like a method you have to you know implement it inside a class, and then it also takes a lot of time to create every update method. So it is a very similar problem to what we faced in the previous implementation. So is there a way better than this method? Fred, not there is, and it is called copy methods. No, I'm not talking about how to copy your friend's work effectively. But to have a method that copies your current project item, which updates every property that you want, so you have a copy with method, and inside it, instead of a compulsory kind of parameters or arguments, you will have an optional parameters. So that means that if you were to just need an ID update, you will not need to. Use any of these parameters that you don't have to put in any of these arguments inside. You just need the ID. So if you were to see here, it returns a project item, and you will see the word this. So this represents the current property of the object you created. If you do not update the rest, you could see there is this double question mark, which means if it's null or you did not. Pass in any data through the params, then it will just use the current property data that it has initially been created. So if you were to update the ID and title property, then it will look something like this. So you have the project item object or class over here, and then you will create a project item with its ID and title. So the ID will be ASDF, and then the title will be a to-do app, and then you assign it to a project item variable. So you will have your project item that you have created earlier, and then you will use the method copy with, and then you will update according to the params or the property that you want. So you want to update the ID, so we just Put in the word ID and then its value, which is HJKL, and then you will assign it to the project updated ID, and then this variable, if you were to print it out, you can see that the ID has been updated to HJKL, and then our title remains the same. However, if you want to update the title to a not to do app. Then what you will do is you will do something very similar to the copy with ID. You will just use the copy with but with the title, and then you will just call from the project item variable they have created earlier, and then you just assign it to another variable called project updated title. And then if you were to print it out, you could see that the ID remains the same, but the title has been updated. So this I would say is the most simplest way. And I guess the most less verbose but understandable way for you to update your immutable data. Second is that there's no way for you to corrupt the original data. As far as the two earlier examples, they both are unable to corrupt original data as well. And lastly, you can use this method, the copy method, with the state update function. If you forget what the state update function looks like, this is what it looks like. So you have a function outside of the class, and then for example, you have update project item ID. Then what you need is a old project item with a new ID, and then you can just use the copy with, and it will return the old project item with the updated ID accordingly. Same goes that if you want to update a project item title, you will just pass in the title and then also the old project item that you want to update with. So it's pretty simple, and then you will return it with the old project item with the copy with method that just overrides the current title. So that's about it. In summary, we learned how to update the immutable data types in three ways. First is to Create a state update function that lives outside the class. Second is to create a state update class method that lives inside the class, and lastly, the copy method, which just returns an object with a copy of your original object. So don't forget to share and subscribe and like and smash the button. I think so. That's how they say it. And comment down below what are the Dart or Flutter concepts you want me to go through. Next, so stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.